we've been using quite a few axioms to describe the integers, but do we actually need all of these axioms? So here's a calculation that we can do, which will help us explore whether or not we actually need all the axioms. We'll take a look at a plus one times b plus one. We'll do this in two different ways, using left and right distributivity. Okay, so let's, let's expand this out. So I've got uh, a plus one times b plus one, and I'm gonna think of this multiplication as distributing over this addition. And what do I get? So I get a plus one times b plus a plus one times one. Great. Ooh, now I've got another opportunity to use distributivity. So here, this multiplication distributes over this addition. So this is a times b plus one times b. And over here, I've got, uh, well, I've really got the uh, multiplicative identity here. I'm multiplying by one, so I'll just write this as a plus one. Okay, uh, now I've got another multiplicative identity here, so I could write this as a times b plus b plus a plus one. And if I wanna be a little sloppy with associativity, uh, I could just end this by writing that this is a times b plus b plus a plus one. But of course, you know, this only makes sense because I'm also assuming that addition's associative. Now let's expand a plus one times b plus one the other way. Okay, so I've got uh, again uh, a plus one times uh, b plus one, but now I'm going to think of this multiplication as distributing over this addition. So in that case, I get a times b plus one plus one times b plus one. Ooh, and I've got another, uh, chance to use distributivity here. This multiplication distributes over this addition, so I get a times b plus a times one. And here I've got the multiplicative identity multiplying by one, so this is just plus b plus one. Here I've got another multiplicative identity, so I can uh, rewrite this as a times b plus a plus b plus one, and then if I want to be sloppy with associativity again, uh, I might just write down that this is a times b plus a plus b plus one. What we've computed is not exactly the same. So the first time around when we did this, we got uh, a plus one times b plus one is a times b plus b plus a plus one, but the second time, uh, we got something that's equal, but it's not exactly the same expression. It's a times b plus a plus b plus one. Now we'll do some cancellation. We're, we're gonna add the additive inverses of various things to both sides. So remember what we did. We took a plus one times b plus one and we expanded it in two different ways using distributivity, uh, among other things. On the one hand, we got a times b plus b plus a plus one. On the other hand, we got something that's equal, but not exactly the same, a times b plus a plus b plus one. Now, I can uh, add uh, the additive inverse of a times b to the beginning of both of these equal expressions. I can add the additive inverse for one on the ends of both of these expressions and uh, applying some more axioms. Well, what's gonna end up happening? These uh, a times b's uh, that are in common will be canceled. The ones at the ends here will be canceled. And what I'm left with is b plus a on the one hand and a plus b on the other hand. Or in summary, I end up with the fact that b plus a equals a plus b. But, but this is just commutativity. I mean, didn't we already know commutativity? I mean, yes, but, but also no. I mean, in our calculation, we use plenty of axioms. We used left and right distributivity. We used uh, tacitly used associativity of addition. We used the multiplicative identity. And eventually, to do the cancellation, we needed to have additive inverses and then the additive identity. But, but what we never used in our calculation was commutativity. And what that means is that we didn't actually need to assume commutativity of addition. We could deduce the commutativity of addition from the other axioms. I mean, let's go even further. Here's a tantalizing question. Is there just one axiom to rule them all? We're talking about rings after all. Is there perhaps some way of repackaging the definition of a ring so that instead of needing commutativity, associativity, distributivity, and so on, we might get away with just a single axiom and from that axiom deduce all the other axioms for rings? 
Well, in some silly sense, yes. I mean, there there is. You can take all the individual axioms for, for rings and just write the word and between all of those individual axioms. And, and that'll build for you one big axiom, which implies all of the other axioms. So you only need one axiom. I mean, it's a little bit silly, right? But, and, and maybe it you know, says that this whole process of trying to find a minimal set of axioms is itself a little bit goofy, but, but it's coming from the right place, right? Your desire to search for redundancies among the axioms, I mean, it's coming from a place of, of trying to understand the relationship between all of these different axioms. What role does commutativity of addition play in a number system? And, and this, this specific example, right, where we, we see that commutativity of addition can be deduced from some of the other axioms, I mean, it also tells you that you can't find a number system, say, which satisfies left and right distributivity and some of these other axioms, but fails to have a commutative addition. You know, so, so this, this sort of quest of trying to understand these relationships between the axioms, I mean, it not only sheds some light, I think, on the integers, but it also sheds some light on what are the possible number systems out there, right? What would happen if you mess with the axioms? What are the consequences of doing that? And that's an important experience for you because ultimately the goal in, in this course and in mathematics is not just to give you a list of axioms and have you deduce all of the possible theorems that you can conclude from those axioms, right? You're in control of mathematics. You get to pick the axioms. You can make up your own axiom systems and try to figure out what happens if you use those axioms. What can you deduce from that system? Why are, are certain collections of axioms more interesting than other collections of axioms, right? That's the power that you have as a mathematician.